1998 through 2006 BMW 3 Series E46 model, radiator and thermostat replacement. I'm Brian Nessa from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of changing out the radiator and thermostat. You're gonna wanna get the front of the vehicle jacked up. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands. Once you get it jacked up from underneath, we're gonna remove the lower splash shield. On this vehicle, it was missing. To remove the cover, there's going to be uh, fasteners around the perimeter of the shield. So you're going to follow around the perimeter of the shield, removing the fasteners, lowering the shield down, and setting aside. You're going to need some type of container to catch the coolant when you drain it out. Place it underneath the vehicle, and then you can go back up top. Now back up top, we're going to remove this air snorkel here. There's three clips holding it on. We're going to remove those three clips once you get them removed. Then you're going to lift the air snorkel upwards and then pull towards you. And once it pops off, you'll set it aside. Now we're going to remove the air cleaner assembly by unplugging the mass airflow sensor, loosening up the hose clamp for the air snorkel, removing the two 10 millimeter bolts, and right down here, the uh, wiring harness is supposed to be mounted onto a little uh, perch right here. You're going to pull this off and tuck it off to the side. After that, you're going to lift the air cleaner assembly upwards and kind of arc it like this at an angle, and then lift it up and out. There's a little snorkel in the front that you have to clear. Now we're gonna work on getting the fan and fan shroud out of the way. The first thing we need to do is remove this little module from the fan shroud. So you're gonna pull towards the passenger side of the car, lift upwards and then push towards the driver's side and then pull up. Now you can tuck this off to the side. Now we need to get the AC condenser fan electrical connector here out of the fan shroud. So you're just gonna unroute it from the fan shroud. You don't need to unplug it. So you're gonna pull it out and push it off to the side. Now we're gonna unbolt the fan and you need a spanner wrench and a fan clutch wrench that fits on there. The spanner is going to hold the pulley from turning, so you're going to hook it on like this. So you're going to hook it onto the bolts, onto the, uh, on, if you look down here on the water pump, there's some bolts sticking off the pulley. You're going to hook the little ear on the bolts, and that's going to hold the uh, pulley from rotating as you put the wrench on there, and then you're going to loosen up the fan clutch. So you're going to hook the spanner onto the bolts on the pulley, then you're going to put the wrench on there. And you're going to rotate it opposite to what you think. So it's instead of lefty loosey, it's righty loosey. So it's get this backwards threads on this. So you're going to you're going to pull the wrench right to loosen up the fan clutch. Once you got the fan clutch spun loose, before we take it all the way off, we're going to take the clip off here, and then right here on the opposite side, there's going to be a bolt. We're going to take the T25 torque bolt out. To do that, I'm using my Milwaukee uh, quarter inch drive ratchet here. It makes quick work of these type of things. I will link up all these tools that I'm using in this video in the description. Once you get the bolt out and the clip removed, now you can take the fan shroud and fan here and you can finish spinning it off. So you're gonna spin it to the towards the driver's side right here. So you're spinning it clockwise and that's gonna loosen up the fan. I know it sounds weird doing the opposite threads, but you're gonna spin it opposite direction and spin the fan clutch until it comes completely off. Once it comes completely off, you can lift the fan clutch and the fan shroud straight up and out of the car like this and set aside. Now with the fan and fan shroud removed, I'm going to get the coolant draining and I got my bucket underneath and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the, this clip here, pull it upwards and I'm going to pull the cooler off. I'm gonna, I'm, so I'm going to wiggle it and it's going to pop out and once you get it popping out right here, you can just let it lower down and uh, hang right here and the coolant will drain into the bucket. To get it to drain faster, you can remove the radiator cap. Now we're going to work on getting the hoses and thermostat out of the vehicle. If you look right here, there should be a this wire right here. There should be a zip tie going around the hose holding it down. So you're going to cut that off. This one was missing. And then right here, we're going to unplug the electrical connector for the temp sensor. So we're going to work on getting the upper hose off. We're, we're going to detach it from the bottle here. So there's going to be a clip, a couple clips that we need to pop loose. So you're going to need a pick tool and you're going to hook it into the clip right here and you're going to pull the clip upwards and then there's going to be another, a second clip right here. You're going to pull that clip upwards. So I'm going to be replacing the upper and lower radiator hose with this particular job. So I'm going to leave some of this stuff hooked up and just take it out as one assembly. There's a coolant temp sensor down here on the lower hose you need to unplug and there's a clip on the bottom that you need to pull up on the lower hose. Once you get that pulled up, now you can uh, wiggle the hose or you can use a, a, a screwdriver or a pry bar and pry lightly on the edge right here of the hose and you can pry, just give it a little pry and wiggle with your other hand and the upper hose will pop off the, the coolant reservoir bottle here. 
It takes a little bit of work if it's been on there for a while. This one was actually just changed not rec just recently. This car has actually been sitting for about three years, and the uh, young kid is revamping this vehicle, so we're doing work as he can afford it. So you're going to pull off the lower hose here, too. You're just going to wiggle it and uh, pop it off. You can pry on the bottom since we're replacing the radiator. So you know, I'm not worried about damaging the radiator since we're replacing it. So you could pry the hose off, too, and we're replacing the hose. Now that the hoses are disconnected from the bottle and off the bottom of the radiator, we're going we're gonna to get the thermostat out. So on this bracket here, there's an 11 millimeter bolt. We're just going to loosen that one up. Then we're going to switch over to a 13 millimeter socket. And we're on the bottom of this bracket here, there's a 13 millimeter bolt. We're going to take that bolt completely out. So you're going to back the 13 millimeter bolt all the way out. Then you're going to switch over to a 10 millimeter socket. And on the thermostat housing, there's three more 10 millimeter bolts. So you're going to use your uh, ratchet here and uh, remove the three bolts. So there'll be a one 10, 10 millimeter bolt on the top and then two 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom side of the thermostat housing here. So you're going to remove all of those fasteners. So once you get all the bolts removed from the thermostat housing, then what you're going to do is just grab the whole thermostat housing and the hoses and wiggle it until it pops off. You're going to pull the wire uh, loom here out of your way. And now you can lift the thermostat and the hoses out of the car and set aside. Now with the upper and lower hose removed and the thermostat removed, there's plenty of room down here. Now we're going to remove this hose here from the res coolant reservoir bottle. So you're going to follow it up here and then remove the clip. So you're going to pop the clip upwards and then you're going to use a pick tool to do that again. So you're going to pop the clip upwards and then once you get the clip popped up, then you're going to wiggle the, the hose and pop it off the bottle right here like this. And you're just going to tuck it off to the side. If you're reusing any of these hoses, you want to be careful not to lose the clips. They do pop off. Now at the bottom of the coolant reservoir is a level sensor we need to uh, unplug. So it's easier to actually just take it out of the bottle by rotating it counterclockwise like this, 90 degrees, and then pulling downwards, and then the sensor will pop out of the bottom of the bottle. So when you get it out, it's going to look like this. It's kind of long, so you're going to pull downwards for about, a, about an inch or so, and then pull it out of the bottle and tuck it off to the side. At the bottom of the coolant reservoir, there's a little plastic plate that mounts onto the radiator. It has a, a second hose or another hose that we need to get to. So I, if, I'm using my pick tool to pick the clip open. If you look right around here around the corner, you can see what I'm talking about, the hose down there. We need to get that hose off the bottom of the radiator. So you're going to pick the, the clip up and then you're going to wiggle that hose until it pops off. Now that you got that hose off, we're going to finish unbolting the radiator. So just below or just to the right of where the the upper hose was mounted onto the neck. There's a T25 bolt right there. We're going to remove that bolt. I'm just going to use a T25 Torx uh, socket and a little extension like this with my ratchet here and go ahead and remove that bolt. Now that we got that bolt removed, the next step is to pop the bottle off the radiator. The coolant reservoir pops off. So what we're going to do is if we follow at the bottom down here, there's going to be a clip. So you're going to pull this clip outwards right here. And then what you're going to do is grab the bottle and kind of wiggle it and pull upwards and it'll pop off like this. Now you can set this aside. This is a brand new bottle that we installed a few weeks ago. Like I said, the customer is doing these repairs and, and stages. Now you can push the radiator towards the belts and then pull upwards and start pulling it out of the car. And then you'll have to uh, pull the wiring or push the wiring off to the side. And also on the driver's side, the hoses for the coolers are right there kind of snag on it so you got to wor uh, work with it and push it to the left and push it to the right and then you can lift the radiator up and out of the car so when you get your radiator out of the car it's going to come out as one piece right here this piece right here is actually a brand new piece when doing these jobs i recommend replacing the reservoir and this plastic plate here that mounts onto the radiator i will link it all up in the description of the video so i wanted to show you where the radiator mounts there's a little perch here that it sits on the top of so when you uh when you put them in you kind of push put it downwards and then push it towards the condenser and then it mounts on the corners here or it bolts. So I wanted to show you the part numbers before we start reinstalling it. These, this is a factory direct replacement of radiator and then we're going to re replace the upper and lower radiator hose and also the thermostat. I will link up all these parts in the description of the video. So once you unbox the radiator, there's a two choices for uh, petcocks to install on the vehicle. So it's going to depend on if your vehicle is a automatic or manual. So, so according to the paperwork that came with the radiator, the smaller petcock is for the automatic vehicle, which I'm, my car is. So I'm going to install this into the radiator. It's going to mount right here. 
So I like to put a little uh, lubricant on the seals before you install them. And what I like to use for lubricant is I like to use liquid dish soap. So I put a little bit of liquid dish soap on the, uh, on the seal here and then it'll slide in, in easily. And as you put this in, you'll notice these little tabs here. You'll have to squeeze them inwards a little bit to get them to, to uh, go in. So you line up the little slot, squeeze the little tabs in here, and you push it down until it bottoms out. And then you're going to take a 22-millimeter uh, wrench, put it on here, and you're going to twist it clockwise about a quarter inch. And once it goes about a quarter inch, that'll lock it into place. So now I'm going to transfer over this plastic plate here with the thermostat built into it. This is a brand new unit that was put on here a couple weeks ago, but I recommend you replace this unit. So I'm going to take this off and transfer it over. This portion over here is a built-in thermostat that comes with it. It's actually a separate piece. So I'll link this up also. So we're going to remove the screw here, and then we're going to remove the screw here on the side. They're T25 torque bits. So I'm just going to use my little impact driver here and remove these two bolts. And then uh, I'm going to take this off and transfer it over. To get it off at the bottom here, it has a little O-ring that's attached to the radiator. You need to pry that up with a little flat blade screwdriver, and that'll pop up. So once you pop it up here, then you can uh, slide it off. So it's going to slide upwards and then off. Before we can install this onto the new radiator, we need to take this little piece off here on the bottom. It uh, has all these little hooks on here where the fan shrouds and stuff hook into. So we need to take a little flat blade screwdriver and pop it out right here. And right here, we're going to pop this out. And then we're just going to transfer this over to the new radiator. So I have the radiators laid side by side so I can just go right from one over to the, to the other one. So I'll put it back on exactly the way I took it off. So I'll hook it in like this and press it in there until it clicks into place. Now I'm going to take this plastic plate assembly here and make sure that the seal is looped up and I'm going to line it up and press it into place. It has to hook over the top of the radiator first at the top so it's going to hook over and you slide it down and you uh, then you line it up and press it into place. Once you got it uh, pressed into place it's also got a hook in the bottom here. This little ear has to hook on that plastic piece we installed. Now you can go ahead and start the screws and tighten this down once you got them lined, all lined up. Now the radiator is prepped, but before I install it back into the vehicle, I'm going to prep the, uh, the engine block here where the thermostat uh, was mounted. So I'm going to clean this all up and get that cleaned up for the thermostat to go back in. Now that that's cleaned up, we're ready to put the radiator back in. We need to push the hoses out of the way and these little rubber tabs down at the bottom is where the radiator is going to sit. So you're going to lower the radiator down into position taking your time and you're going to push the wiring harness on your left and on your right, the hoses. You're going to kind of push those out of your way. You may have to angle the radiator a little bit to get them underneath the hoses and uh, work it in there. You just want to take your time to put it in there. So you're going to lower the radiator down until it lands onto those little rubber pads and you're going to pull it towards the bumper. And then once it's fully in there and seated, then you're going to start the, uh, the torque bolt that's on the, on the driver's side right under the radiator neck. The bolt on the passenger side will leave off until we get the fan shroud back on in. So like I said, we're going to just lower this back in here and then we'll start the bolt here on the driver's side right here next to the neck. Start that torque bolt. Now we can go ahead and mount the cooler here at the very bottom. So you can uh, line these up with the two holes on here. You're going to make sure that that tab is pulled up. You're going to take the cooler here and uh, inspect the O-rings. If the O-rings are in bad shape, I recommend changing them out. So you're going to line it up with the with the tabs here and you're going to pull it in until it seats fully seats and then once it's fully seated then you're going to push the clip downwards and, and once you push the clip downwards that's going to hold it in place or lock it in place give it a little tug to make sure it's not going to pop back off make sure it's really secure now i'm going to attach the very bottom hose here that mounts onto the plastic plate so i'm going to push it on until, it, until you hear the uh, little uh, clip clip on and click and make sure it's pushed down and then uh, you're going to give it a little tug and make sure it's not going to pop back off. Now we're going to make sure that the level sensor here is out of the way so we're going to push it inwards towards the towards the belt there. Now we're going to install the coolant reservoir bottle. I wanted to show you the part numbers. This is a brand new unit that uh, was installed a couple weeks ago. Like I said, this guy is fixing the car kind of in layers as he's got money. So we're going to take that little hook right here 
it's got a hook on the plate right here and then it's gonna uh, the bottoms here is gonna go onto the uh, thermostat on the bottom you gonna make sure that, that clip is pulled outwards before you install this so you lower it down into position making sure that that hook hooks onto the uh, to the plate and you're just gonna push it down until it, until it fully seats you'll kind of feel it click into place after that you're gonna reach around the back here and push the clip in give it a little tug to make sure the bottle doesn't pop back off now we're going to reach over to the bottom of the bottle and install the coolant level sensor. So you'll slide that upwards into the hole on the bottom of the coolant reservoir and then you'll turn it uh, and that'll lock the sensor into place. Once you get that secure, now you can take the hose here above it and you can go ahead and make sure that that seal is lubed up and you can go ahead and attach that to the bottle. So you'll press it onto the bottle until you hear it click. Make sure that the clip is pushed downwards. Give it a little tug to make sure it does not pop back off. So now I'm going to assemble the thermostat and the upper and lower hoses onto the thermostat. I wanted to share with you the uh, part numbers for this thermostat. So I'm going to link that up in the description also. So now I'm going to take the, the uh, new hose and make sure the seals are lubricated. I'm using, once again, I'm using liquid dish soap to lubricate these seals. So I'm going to lubricate all the seals and then uh, we're going to assemble the upper and lower hose. So you're going to line it up with the uh, thermostat until the uh, there's little clips on there and you're going to line it up and you're going to press it on until it clips and you just give it a little tug to make sure it doesn't pop off i also wanted to point out that new hose has a new sensor built into the hose already so you're going to go ahead and just line the tabs up push them on until they lock into place and click them in there now we're ready to install this into the vehicle so you'll fish it down there into place i went ahead and once i got it fished down into place i went ahead and started the uh, lower hose on the bottom of the radiator and clipped that into place so i want and then also i put the uh, wiring on the uh, sensor here plugged that back in and made sure it was all clipped together after i was happy with that and that's secure now i what i did was i i put the thermostat into place so i take this little bracket here you have to kind of pull it forward and, and move it to the side and you're going to slide that little uh, thermostat underneath the ear of that bracket. Once you get it slid underneath the ear of that bracket, then you can start all four of the bolts. So once I got all four of the bolts on the thermostat housing here started, then I went ahead and just used my little ratchet and ran them in until they were snug. So I tightened up, I just run all four of the bolts in, the, two, the three 10 millimeters and the one 13 millimeter, and then the 11 millimeter on the top of the bracket you can go ahead and tighten that up too so once you get all four of these bolts snugged up then i went with back over it with a uh with a regular hand ratchet and i tightened up all four of the bolts and i did this by feel so i tightened them down until they were snug and in about a quarter turn more now that my thermostat is secure i went ahead and secure this uh this wire here with some electrical conduit, conduit and then go ahead and put a zip tie around it and there's this little groove right here. So you'll zip tie the wiring harness to the top of the radiator hose. That way that it won't fall into the fan. Now you can go ahead and clip the upper hose onto the radiator coolant reservoir bottle. So you're gonna push it on until they both of them click and then you make sure that the uh, tabs are pushed down. You're gonna give it a pull to make sure it doesn't pop back off. Now you can go ahead and remove the bleeder screw here. Just take it all the way out. Just be careful not to drop it or lose it. It can be tough to find if you drop it. Now that you got the bleeder screw out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and start putting the fan shroud and fan back into position. As you put this fan and fan shroud back in, if you, um, if you look at the bottom, there's these little hooks in the bottom where these little hooks on the fan shroud hook into on the bottom of the radiator. So we're going to hook those little ears into the hooks on the bottom of the radiator. So you're going to lower these both down into position at the same time. As you're lowering it down, you're trying to keep the fan shroud level with the radiator and kind of basically scrape the edge of the radiator as it goes in. And you want to try to put it in straight as you can possibly get it. And you may have to push the wiring harness on the uh, left side here or on the passenger side here. You can push that out of your way as you're lowering the fan shroud into position. And you'll see it. It'll hook on top of the radiator with a little, little hook. And at the bottom, you, you can see it down there. It hooks into those little, little tabs at the bottom of the radiator. Once the fan shroud is pretty much into position, then you can reach around back and you can start the, uh, the fan clutch onto the water pump. So you're going to spin it on counterclockwise going the opposite that you would normally do to tighten it up so you'll spin it on counterclockwise. 
once the fan clutch is spun on, now we're going to take these spanner wrenches here and we're going to we're going to do it basically the opposite of the way we took it off. So I'm going to hook it going the other way, hook it on the bolts on the pulley, and then I'll use the wrench to uh, to rotate it counterclockwise and hold the pulley still with the other opposite spanner wrench and tighten it up. Now that you got the fan clutch secure and tight, we're going to go ahead and put the little plastic clip that went on the uh, driver's side of the uh, of the fan shroud here. So you're going to take the little clip here and put it right here and push it in there and lock it into place. After that's secure, on the passenger side here, we can take the uh, screw here, it's the longer screw, and run it through the fan shroud and into the radiator and, and bolt it up. Now you can take the wire loom that went for the uh, condenser fan right here and put it back into the bracket and, and route it back into the little catches and secure it. And then you're going to take, after you get that secure, then you're going to take the little module here and you're going to flip it into place. So you got to push it towards the driver's side of the vehicle with, uh, and then push it downwards. And then once you push it downwards, now you're going to pull it towards the, the passenger side and then push it downwards and then that'll lock it into place. Now we're ready to install the air cleaner assembly. You're going to nose that little snorkel portion inwards like this. So you're going to nose it in and you're going to rotate it in. And on the bottom of the air cleaner is this little slot here. It has to line up with this little rubber grommet down here on the bottom. So you're going to rotate it inwards and down and down into position. And you're going to look around the back and you can see it line up with that little uh, grommet on the bottom. Then you can go ahead and plug the mass airflow sensor in. Start the, uh, the little wire loom that clipped onto the back right here. And you can make sure that the uh, hose clamp is tight on the throttle body. Install the air snorkel on the front and make sure the two 10 millimeter bolts holding it down is secure. Now we're going to fill the coolant reservoir here all the way up until it overflows out of the top and overflows out of the bleeder hole here. I'm using BMW coolant. I'm filling it up with 50-50 mix. Once the coolant is full to the top and the, all the air bubbles come out of the bleeder screw here, then you can go ahead and reinstall the bleeder screw. So you'll spin that in and you're going to run it in until it's snug. It's made out of plastic so you don't need to tighten it down super tight. Just run it in until it's snug. Once the bleeder screw is reinstalled and secure, now we need to remove some of the coolant from the uh, coolant reservoir bottle. This is, a, this is what they call an expansion tank. If you leave it too full, it will it'll actually break the bottle or cause damage elsewhere. So we need to suck out a few ounces. If you look here, the bobber has a little lever, little... Uh, you want it to suck out until it's level right here. There's a diagram also on the side of the bottle. I'm using a fluid extractor to remove some of this coolant out of it, but a turkey baster works really well for this job. So you'll just suck out a couple ounces of fluid here. Now you can start the vehicle and run it for about 10 or 15 minutes until the uh, thermostat opens up. You're also going to want to turn the heater on to the hottest position, but with the blower on the coldest or lowest position, and then you're gonna run the car, like I said, for about 10 or 15 minutes, and you may have to top the uh, coolant off or fill it up or double check it. I will link up all the parts and tools in the description of the video. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.